Oh, hi there. Welcome to my channel. My name is Leah and today is Tuesday. So that means it is time for Get Ready With Murder. This is a weekly series that I do on this channel where I will put on a face of makeup and tell you a true crime story. Today I will be sharing with you the scream murders, the murder of Cassie Jo Stoddard. So if you want to see how I did this makeup and hear that story, make sure to stay tuned. All right, here we go. As usual, I will show you the products that I'm using, but I'm not gonna talk about them. I'll list them all in the description box below because otherwise I get distracted and then I talk about how much I like an eyeshadow or how much this thing isn't working and it detracts from the story. So today we are going to be talking about the murder of Cassie Jo Stoddard. This is actually a bit of a recent case. It took place in 2006. Cassie lived in Idaho. Um, she was a junior in high school in 2006. She was, you know, Pretty average Midwestern girl, high school, good student, had a nice little boyfriend, um, family was all there, just an average American girl. On the night of September 22nd in 2006, Cassie was house sitting for her aunt and uncle who had recently moved to her town from California. And like probably any teenage girl, she invited her boyfriend over to come over and watch a movie and just hang out. So she and her boyfriend were hanging at the house and two of his friends came over um, to watch the movie with them. But before they started the movie, the two friends decided that they didn't want to stay in and watch a movie. They wanted to go to the movies instead. Um, Cassie and her boyfriend were just like, nah, we're going to stay at home. You guys go. Um, we'll catch up with you at school on Monday or whatever. So the two friends left and... Cassie and her boyfriend were still at home and decided to watch the movie or at their at her aunt and uncle's house and while they were there the power went out for a bit but then it came back on so everything seemed fine um Cassie's boyfriend you know they watched the movie her boyfriend left for the night and and that was that so the following Sunday a few days later Cassie's aunt and uncle returned home from their trip. And when they walked in, Cassie's 13 year old cousin found her body in the home. The police were called and came out and they found Cassie was stabbed to death. She was stabbed 30 times. 11 of the stabs are found to be fatal. I'm sorry, 12 of the stabs are found to be fatal. And 11 of the fatal stab wounds were done by one knife. So that means two people had attacked and killed Cassie and left her in the home. The police investigation of course initially looked at her boyfriend as the main suspect and after interviewing him and ruling him out with as a witness they decided to interview the two friends that were there um, Brian Draper and Tori Adamic. They interviewed these boys three times. The first interview um, was you know full of where were you that night? What was going on? And then the second interview, they got permission from Tori to search his room. Um, and then upon that search, they found a knife sheath with no knife um, that would have been a knife similar to, or at least matching, one of the knives that had stabbed Cassie. Did I say Tori? Because I meant Brian. It was Brian who let them search his room. Um, so the third interview with Brian, he stated that it was Tori's idea to hide in the house and scare Cassie. And then as interviews progressed, he said it was Brian's idea and he was the one that stabbed Cassie. Further interviews with Brian, he maintained that it was Tori's idea. Um, the, and then instead of just scaring Cassie, it was Tori's idea to then stab Cassie. And he led the police to some more evidence like clothes and weapons and um, masks. So while he maintained that it was all Tori's idea, Tori did everything. Brian was just there and he was just a just coerced into it by Tori. The police found further evidence that was pretty damning for Brian too. What they found was video of Brian and Tori talking prior to the murder that they wanted to get famous 
basically they wanted to be a famous serial killer. They talked about things like Ted Bundy um, and how famous he was now and that if they, you know, if they killed Cassie and they were on the news, they would be super famous and adored. Um, they said things like it would be just like the Scream movie, but in real life. So the events of that night turned out to be that they um, went over to Cassie's aunt and uncle's house with Cassie and her boyfriend Matt, um, said they were going to go to the movies, and when Cassie and Matt said that they were going to stay, Brian and Tori then went and unlocked the basement door, one of them did, and then instead of going to the movies, they snuck back around the house with masks and a knife um, and hid in the basement until Matt's mom came and picked him up and left for the night. So once Matt was gone, the boys um, shut off the power again to scare Cassie and then snuck up uh, and then waited for her to like come down to the basement. Oh, hey now. To check on the power, but she never did. So what they did was they snuck upstairs, um, turned the power back on and um, snuck upstairs and basically did the whole scare her thing, but also attacked and killed her. All right, I just went and cut out my eyes a little bit with concealer so we can get back into it. And after the trial, the, you know, the prosecution, of course, used these videos stating that they um, basically admitted their guilt. They knew exactly what they were doing. Um, they were found to be... They were found to be um, mentally sane and they knew the consequences of what they were doing. So yeah, they were found guilty and sentenced to life. At one point, Tori did attempt to appeal his life sentence stating that it was unconstitutional because he was so young to be given a life sentence. Um, but the judge did uphold that sentence because he, you know, admitted to knowing exactly what he was doing and the um, reason for murder was solely, let me find the quote, um, was based solely on his desire to achieve fame as a serial killer. So those boys are in prison for the rest of their life. Um, they were juniors in high school when this happened. Um, and there's something I think that they talked about a little bit in the trial where it talks about the teenage brain, how until you're older than 16, and this is like, I think it's 16. Um, but it's a fact you don't make decisions or this was one of their arguments was that the teenage brain is not able to fully kind of grasp what consequences are and what they mean for the long term. Um, so I think their argument was these boys, you know, thought that they would be famous and that would be it. Not thinking that to be famous they would need to be caught and to be caught that means that they're going to go to prison and prison's not a fun place to be. Um, so while that was the argument, they were still, you know, completely um, aware of what they were doing. It took a young girl's life away for absolutely no reason and, you know, affected her family and her friends and her community, you know, for the rest of their lives as well. So in 2010, Cassie's family actually filed a suit against the school district, um, stating that the school district knew that these were pretty dangerous individuals and that they should have done a better job protecting Cassie and other students from those two boys. But both the state and the Supreme Court uh, threw, dismissed the case, not threw it out, dismissed it because um, they stated that the actions of those two boys could not have been foreseeable by the school district. So I just went and popped these on my lips and that is the look done. So that is the very sad case of the murder of Cassie Jo Stoddard. It is just one of those cases where nobody wins. The fam like Cassie's family is completely destroyed. Her community was probably shook. Her poor boyfriend, he must felt terrible. Um, but then these two boys, like they're in prison for the rest of their lives. And like, yes, they were clearly terrible when they were 15. And I feel like just from what I've read that Brian, the one who basically said, I'm innocent, it was his idea, realized kind of right away that he fucked up. Um, you know, he led the police to evidence and he basically confessed, although he confessed saying that it was my friend's idea. So I feel like while yes, there's the argument that a teenage brain doesn't know what they're doing, he still knew um, and he knew he was in deep shit and that it wasn't gonna go away. I wanna hear what you guys think of this whole thing. Like, just 
what do you think? This is so crazy. I'd never heard of this case before, and I was a huge fan of the Scream movies back in high school, which was like 99, 98, 99 when they came out. But I guess this case was a few years later and I was already out at the Midwest by that time so maybe that's why I hadn't heard of it. So I guess that means those boys didn't get all the fame that they thought they were going to. Hmm. Weird. Alright you guys, so that is going to be it for me today. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button because it really helps my channel and I will love you forever. Have a super great rest of your day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, 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 bye.